and Calypsi, and this is episode 3 of Monster Loves You. Adolescence is fleeting. You have grown beyond youth and have become an adult. You have been dragged from your bed by your friends and neighbors. What? Who? The where? Why now? They tell you it's time to grow up. You're taken into the woods. The neighbors throw you into the center of a great circle of monsters, all older than you. They whisper to each other, then look at you, then whisper some more. Get on, get on. The monsters murmur and mutter, spit and snarl. They're deciding what best defines you as a monster. After a while, the muttering stops, though the murmuring goes on for some time longer. Finally, the assembled monsters come to a decision. Well, what is it? The ring of monsters shuffles closer to you, forming a tighter circle. Elders loom over you, but the smaller adults crouch low. Your surroundings grow shadowy and dark. What is happening? This is the end of your adolescence. Your body becomes tougher and other grown-up monsters will be more likely to listen to you when you speak. Okay. Oh. So, shadowy and dark, what do they want from you now? You see some concern in their faces. But very little respect. Does a monster need respect to grow up? You can become an adult without earning any respect, but when the time comes, all too soon, to become an elder, you'll dissolve and pass away without it. Oh, is that what this plus up and down thing is? Hmm. It is immediately clear to the crowd that you are very kind for a monster. <laughs> you are sent into the goat pit to... Groom the scrape goat. The goat is unusually unruly and angry. Angry today. Well, let's do that. That seems like the uh, obvious choice. You let the scrape goat butt you with its horn until it's tired. Then you use your claws like clippers. You give it a nice trim and pick off some tasty parasites. The crowd is impressed. Let's share the parasites. Oh, there, I do have respect. Okay, so that is respect. I got no respect all the way till teenager years. Ouch. They're impressed with your generosity. Everyone eats a parasite or two and smiles. Okay. I think I'm doing pretty good. This is pretty much exactly me. This is br brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, you're an adult now. You're going to grow stronger over time, but your personality is no longer as mutable as it was when you were young. Okay. So 14 days, so let's do 7 and 7. If we can. Mm, let's just this one. Balfog and Gritmidden are arguing in the streets over a cat. They both want kitty crickets for lunch. Sounds yummy, so what's the problem? Balfog says he caught the cat, but Gritmidden says it was in his larder before it got out. Both monsters turn to you as a neutral party to the side. Mm, yeah, let's go with Finders Eaters. There's no proof that it was in the other guy's larder thing. Later. Balfog offers you and Gritman the whisker drippings by way of thanks to you and apology to Gritman. That sounds amenable. Okay. So that was one. Uh, let's do this. All of Omen is a buzz. Elders glare angrily at everyone and then look back at the broken sign at the town gate. You look down at the little piece of the sign you're holding and blush. What did I do? Coming back from a hunt, you were so full of the high spirits that you jumped up and slapped the side, and you just slapped a little too hard with your claws. Oops! Blistry spots the bit of sign that you're holding. Hey, don't tell anyone you broke it. It'll get fixed. This will all blow over. It's just an ill wind that blows. Nobody any good. Bygones will be bygones. Blistry is often accused of thinking she knows everything. This includes human cliches, all of them. Hmm. 
Um, Blistry says I can take care of this. Look, I took a bit of the sign too. I can slip something to Varric's hair when he isn't looking. Nobody believes him, and since he's always lying and stealing things. No, let's come forward and admit it. Oh no, I lost respect. <laughs> the gathered elders scowl at you. They take turns chewing you out, which for monsters is a more literal expression that you might expect. Back and bloody you creep back to your hovel to heal. You take solace in the fact that your honor is intact. You messed up, but you told the truth, and everyone will remember that. Okay. Let's play more politic games. Um, there's two of these bear things running away, so let's see what that is. The fast sloth is tearing roofs off of hovels. Elders and larger adults charge at it, but it beats them back with its deceptively slow arms. Let's get a closer look at the action. You watch from the shadows, the sloth leaps from roof to roof like a huge demented monkey. It rips loose a big piece of corrugated metal. Let's stay hidden for now. You realize you're the only monster left in the area. All the others are far away, some out cold, some just huddled out of reach of those huge claws. Uh, let's hide a bit. The sloth's claws clip a power line. Black fluid spills out and its matted fur crackles with electricity. <laughs> the beasts flee into the forest. Oh, okay, bye. Some monsters who didn't fight the sloth come running up to you. They cheer you for driving the creature away. Hmm. I wonder if they'll respect me if I admit I didn't do it. Let's go for it. Honesty plus one, respect minus three. Boo. Most of the crowd disperses, some of them hoot at you in disappointment before they go. Oh, I just got a lot of respect from- okay, whatever. Elder Hamreg awakens and cleans sloths but off of his hide. Don't worry, your word is worth more than the opinion of a bunch of cowards. Makes sense. So one, two, three. Let's do the door. You hear a cry from a nearby hovel. What's happening over there? Sasswait, a new adolescent, doesn't understand how the windows in her hovel work. She's trapped her paws under a heavy pain. Well, obviously we're gonna free her. You walk over and take a look. This should be easy for a grown-up monster like you. Yep, lift the window. Sasweet seems afraid of you, but these things happen. She thanks you for releasing her from the window. You notice that a small crowd has gathered. Help her treat her injured arm. You tend to her bruise with a salve made from flowers and mushrooms. Soon she feels no pain at all. The crowd applauds your helpfulness. Now I am 27% respect. Um, let's do this jumping demon. Monsters are gathering around the skull pool. They invite you to dance with them. Let's dance. The only problem is you've never done the skull dance and now everyone is watching you. Um, let's wait for someone else to do it. Oh. Alright. We'll just dance. Mm. Let's respect the skulls. You dance slowly and somberly, not quite sure what to do, but doing it with dignity. When you finish, all the other monsters howl with approval. Hey, that worked out pretty well. Five, let's do this one. The Spine Doctor is treating two injured monsters in Portland Square. Let's watch. She breaks off her own quills and using, uses them like sewing needles. A little iron pot boils over a small fire, but it's just water. The doctor seems to have run out of something. Who is the spine doctor? Marinus's cousin twin and has many pointy bits all over her body. She's an ancient monster, even older than an elder, and has healed the sick for many years. Let's just watch for now. The doctor cleans the wounds and draws loops from thin twine from her pouch. Breaking off one of her spines, she uses it like a needle to slow shut the 
So she had the largest cuts, so that's it. Nope, she sings wordlessly during the procedure, applying a gentle touch whenever a patient stirs. The attention, the kindness seems as important as the actual treatment. Interesting. Uh, let's do this pointy guy. You show your newest collection of human artifacts to your neighbors. They seem suitably oppressed and listen in. Let's say more. The truth is, you just found them in a woods. But everyone seems so interested, it would be a shame to let them down. Monsters do love a story, so you could stretch the truth. Lie big. Tell them you tricked a human. Just a little lie to keep things interesting. Tell the straight truth. Oh, well, let's tell the straight truth. By the time you're done, you're halfway done with the tale of your peaceful walk back to Omen with the artifacts. Hamrag is asleep and everyone else has gone home. At least you were true to yourself. I think that was seven. Yeah. Let's go. There it is. Explore the mist. Sword. You find a red hood in a basket in the middle of the forest path. A human house is nearby. Funny, you never noticed it before. There is a white picket fence out front. Let's take the hood and the basket home. They're too damaged to be considered proper artifacts, but they're interesting. Nash Nash will probably eat them the next time she drops by. Sadness. Ooh, blood spatter. You stalk the forest, hunting an elusive swift elk. Suddenly it emerges from the underbrush, lowering its antlers and pawing at the ground. It's going to charge. Let's tear it apart! The elk charges and you duck under it, slashing a hole in its chest. But instead of a heart, you find nothing. The elk turns and catches you with its antlers and flings you into a tree. The elk bounds away. It's unkillable. There's nothing that's unkillable. Go after it. Leave the elk in the woods. Let's warn everyone. Yeah, there's thank you for alerting them to this unusual prey. They spread out. Eventually, Jaggery finds the elk and devours it whole. He seems a little dizzy afterwards. <laughs> That's it? Okay. Um, laughing guy. A flock of geese are in the square. No one can talk above the din. Nash Nash screams, last one to drive them away is the loser, and she's on that human scooter she found. Let's hunt down a cool secret weapon of your own. You run to Hamrag's hovel and borrow the fox pelt he uses as a doormat. Oops. Plunking it on your head, you run towards the geese, growling and yipping. The geese swarm you. Uh-oh, you can think of two good options. Think fast. Out honk the geese, or attack them. You bite a goose in two and grab three more, creating a tornado of feathers. Nash Nash jumps off the scooter to join in the feast. You win, she admits. Mouth full. Ooh. Tooth guy. You come upon a scene of hundreds of frogs, all gathered on a stream bank. They're ribboning back and forth in clearly what is a debate of some kind, watched by a stork. What are they arguing over? Half the frogs surround a log as though it is their leader. The other half are huddled at the feet of the somewhat bemused stork. Frogs are afraid of everything bigger than them, which includes every monster ever, and that includes you. Okay, so they're afraidy frogs. I wonder if they'll, if, if I eat the stork, if they'll like turn to my side. Let's do that. Ignoring the amphibian debate, you seize the stork and bite into its feathery body. By the time you've left, all the frogs have settled around the log. Mm. Oh well. One of the elder monsters nods, nods sagely. You just selected their new king for them. Nicely done. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wanted to be their king. Let's do sly smile. You scoop a big fish from the forest stream. As you're about to bite into it, it says, Wait, wait, I'm magic. I can grant you a wish. Dispute the spurious claim, for sure. All I wish for is something to eat, you snarl. The fish realizes what you mean as you bite into it. <laughs> um, 
this one. Wild chickens are back in season as delicious as they are mean. They're loose within the whale mist and the monsters are all hunting them down. So let's get out there and hunt those wild chickens. Deep in the woods you're looking for chicken scratch when you literally stumble over a hen guarding a cluster of chicks. The hen clucks and caws at you. Let's fight the hen. Though the clucking makes your blood turn cold, you seize the great hen and fight until you're both a mess of feathers and blood. But victory is savory. Ooh. Nash Nash cheers so hard that two chickens she hasn't killed yet escape her grasp. I'll that respect. Oh, cool. I can actually learn what it is. Oh. I should have been trying to get this earlier on. Uh, let's do this one. You and Gobclaws come across an ant and a grasshopper both locked in mortal combat. Each is biting the other's back leg. Obviously we're going to get involved. As you reach for the bugs, Gobclaws holds you back. Isn't there a legend about bugs and wheat? Maybe we should be careful. Uh, no. Silly Gobclaws. Monsters do not fear such things. We will interfere. Um, let's separate them and eat them. Not much meat you mutter and use the wheat stalk to scratch an itch. Gobclaw sighs and he agrees and you both move on. 